What's up everybody? Welcome to the Car Passion channel. Today I'm going to be explaining how to change your fuel injectors and I'm also going to be explaining why you want to change your fuel injectors and explaining the different components of the fuel system, the pump, the regulator, when and why or if you would want to change any of those components as well. And I'm also going to go over at the very end of the video for anyone running Megasquirt what major settings you need to change in Megasquirt when you change your injectors. So let me talk about a question that I've received many, many times, and that is how much power will I get if I upgrade my injectors? Or I wanna upgrade my injectors to run richer so I get more power. But that's not really how it works. See, in your engine, you have to maintain a certain ratio called the air to fuel ratio to be both safe and make the most amount of power possible. The major factor in getting more power out of your engine is getting more air into the engine. That's why things like turbochargers and superchargers add so much power because you're forcing a lot more air into the engine. But when you force that much air into the engine, you have to add enough fuel to make sure that that ratio stays safe. So eventually you'll start pushing so much air into the engine that your stock fuel injectors won't be able to inject enough fuel to maintain that ratio. So that's when you need to upgrade your injectors. Before I get more into the explanation of how the different components in the fuel system work, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove everything and that way I can illustrate it better. Keep in mind this procedure is going to be on a 1.6 car, but it is very, very similar for all Miatas. There are two safety precautions you have to take before you dive into the fuel system. First thing, come over here to your fuse box that's on the passenger side and you're going to remove this big black relay. That's the fuel pump relay. Then just crank the car over for a few seconds. And what that's gonna do is relieve the fuel pressure from the fuel system. So when you remove that first hose, it doesn't spray fuel everywhere. Second step, hopefully you guessed it by now, remove that negative battery terminal. So the 1.6 and the 1.8 cars are already gonna start differing in this step. First thing I'm gonna do here is remove the air valve. This is the valve that makes your car idle higher when it's cold. The 1.8 cars, I know they don't have the same thing, but basically what I'm gonna do here is get everything around the fuel rail out of the way so I can just pull it straight out. Just go ahead and set that out of the way. Remove your PCV valve, or at least the hose. So now you have pretty clear access to the fuel rail and the next thing we're going to do is disconnect the lines. First remove your gas cap to release any pressure inside the tank. So the rubber lines that are connected to the fuel rail can actually be pretty hard to disconnect. I like to disconnect the rail here because you have a lot more access to these clamps and getting the lines off. Lay down a paper towel just in case a little bit of fuel spills. Remove your spring clamp. This may take some persuasion to remove. You want to twist it back and forth to completely free it up. And then you can take the plier on the end like that. Just push and it'll pull off like that. These lines can be so hard sometimes you have to cut them off. So it's a good idea to buy some rubber fuel lines before you start this procedure so you can replace them. Disconnect all of the fuel injectors. Remove the vacuum line from the fuel pressure regulator. And remove the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the fuel rail to the intake manifold. Before I remove it, I like to carefully remove the plastic spacers to be sure that they don't drop and get lost because those are important. Now the rail is completely free, so a little bit of jiggling about. And just pull it right up. Probably spill a little bit of fuel, so put some rags down. You can see down where the injectors came from. It's pretty dirty. You want to try to get in there real carefully with a Q-tip or something like that and just clean the dirt out of there the best you can so you don't have a vacuum leak later. So basically you have a pump in your tank and it pumps fuel through this hose and through the rail. But the pump is dumb. The pump is always pumping the same amount of fuel, no matter what. So this regulator right here 
sees when the target fuel pressure is reached, which in a Miata is about 48 PSI. This regulator opens up and it lets the extra fuel through this hose back into the tank. So this always maintains the same fuel pressure. And then the fuel injectors open and close a certain amount of times every second to allow the proper amount of fuel into the engine. And those are controlled by the ECU. So let's talk about your upgrade path. What parts do you need to upgrade? When do you need to upgrade them? And what do you not need to upgrade? So the best way I can think of to illustrate this is uh, with this garden hose. Now, the gun here is gonna be the fuel injector. The hose is the fuel rail. The faucet is the fuel pressure regulator and the water company is the fuel pump. I would be the ECU controlling the injector. So to hit my target air to fuel ratio, I need a certain amount of fuel. And we'll just say my tomato garden over here is how much water I need, you know, to hit my target AFR. So, all right, everything stock can easily reach the tomato garden. Now, me adding a turbocharger to the car is like taking that tomato garden and moving it across the street into the neighbor's yard. There's no way all the stock stuff is going to be able to spray all the way over into that tomato garden. So we have to upgrade something. Let's start with the car that's equipped with Mega Squirt. So we'll pretend I'm smart for a minute. I can take this hose nozzle and put on a unit that flows a lot more and then I'll be able to spray across the street and everything will be good. And I'm smart so I know how to control a bigger hose nozzle. Now eventually I'm going to put a hose nozzle that flows so much as that tomato garden's getting farther and farther away I'm not going to be able to reach it. So you know between 250-300 wheel horsepower it doesn't matter how much fuel your injector can flow the pump cannot flow enough fuel for the demand of the engine. So I'm gonna to have to call the water company and say, yo, I need some more fuel flow because my tomato garden is like in a different zip code now and I can't water it. So at that point, you'll have to upgrade your pump. But if you have a car that's on Mega Squirt, 250 wheel horsepower or less, you can get away with just upgrading the fuel injectors. Now, if your fuel pump is 200,000 miles old, it's a good idea to replace it because they do fail. So now let's take a car with a stock ECU. So I'm dumb. This stock sprayer here is the only thing I know how to control. I can't control a fancy one, can't control a bigger injector. The only thing I can really do is take this fuel pressure regulator and just crank it up as high as it can go. So now the fuel pressure is a lot higher and I'm forcing more fuel through the injectors or I'm forcing more water through the gun. Now at a certain point, this gun is not going to be able to flow enough, which is where you're limited with the stock ECU. The stock injectors still have a maximum, even when you increase the pressure, you know, up to the recommended maximum of around 100 PSI, the stock injectors can only flow so much, so that's where you're limited. So long story short, if you have a standalone ECU, you never need to upgrade your fuel pressure regulator. You just need to make sure that the fuel pump can flow enough fuel and the fuel injectors can release enough fuel into the engine. If you have a car with a stock ECU, you can't upgrade the injectors, so you have to supply them with more pressure so they can let more fuel into the engine. The only time you need to upgrade the fuel pump is if you've exceeded the maximum amount of fuel that the pump itself can flow. So now you have your fuel rail. To get the injectors out, you just gotta slowly work them out. You just have a simple O-ring at the top and a rubber grommet there and then another seal here at the bottom and if you're doing new injectors um, you really need to replace all of those things so you don't have any leaks. Once the rail itself is clean and dry you just want to use uh, maybe a little bit of Vaseline or something like that and you'll get the injector started and you just want to ease it into place kind of move it around a little bit let it slide into place don't force it because you can split that o-ring and you'll know it because you'll have a big fuel leak. When it goes in you can you'll feel it kind of sit down there's a groove for that o-ring and you'll feel it sit down and you can be able to pull on it and it won't come loose. After you swap out the injectors you're just going to drop it right back into place how it was. Uh, you could do this several different ways some people put all the injectors in individually and then drop the rail on top of it. I kind of like to put the injectors in while the rail is out because I can really get a good feel if they're seated or not. Before you get it all the way down into place, don't forget to put the spacers back in. Once you're sure everything is seated, put your fuel rail bolts back in. Hook your fuel lines up 
make sure you get them in the right order. I forgot to mention earlier, you may want to mark which one goes where since they are right next to each other. Plug the injectors back in. Reinstall the PVC hose. And the vacuum line to the fuel pressure regulator. Reinstall your air valve. Fuel pump relay goes back in. After you put your gas cap back on and hook up the negative battery terminal, go ahead and start it up. So if you are running Mega Squirt, this is the one thing that you do need to change immediately when you change your injectors. Now, of course, this car is broken boosted and it is not on Mega Squirt, but I do have Tuner Studio here and I can show you uh, to clear up any confusion, I did not actually upsize the injectors on the car. I just did the whole procedure to show you how to change them. So you come up here to basic load settings, engine and sequential settings. And then you have this button here called required fuel. And what you do is you're going to click that and this little calculator is going to come up. I'm going to change this to CCs. So you put in your engine size. Let's say you were going to upgrade to the RX-8 injectors. I believe they're 420s. And then you click OK. And it calculates that you're going to need approximately a 6.4 in this required fuel cell. And then come down here and click burn. This is basically a scaling value. So it tries to help scale your fuel table when you change your injector size. So if you double your injector size, you, this number you're gonna set to half. So if you had a 250cc injector, you put in a 500cc injector, you'll cut this number in half. And that's gonna help get your fuel table close to where it should be. It's still gonna need some retuning and remapping. The only other thing that can be pretty important to change, or at least have pretty close under fuel settings, injector dead time. You gotta make sure your injector dead time is fairly accurate, and that's a whole topic by itself. So just Google it, head over to MiataTurbo.net. I ran the RX-8 injectors at 0.8, and the car ran completely fine. So do some homework on that to see what you need to set it to, but that's not as important as changing your rec fuel. So that's about all I have for you on injector upgrades. If you have any questions, you know the drill. Drop me a comment, and don't forget, today is the big meet. So if it's the first time you're hearing about it, if you're local to Southern California, shoot me a direct message on Instagram at the Car Passion Channel. If you're not local to Southern California and you still wanna check out some clips from the meet, check out my Snapchat, Car Passion CH. I'm gonna be shooting some videos and pictures through Snapchat. On the way up there, we're gonna have a giant caravan and everything and it's gonna be super fun. I'm really excited about it. If you like the video and you wanna see more installs and other Miata content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next time.